So my name is Chelsea Trafton, and for my project, we focused on cysteine incorporation into the milkweed plant. So our main plant focus is tropic milkweed. There are about eight to nine species um, of milkweed, but tropic is the one that we're focusing on. So a main chemical group in tropic milkweed is cardiac glycosides. Cardiac glycosides can be used for medicinal purposes to help the heart beat stronger and to also make it slower. Um, so recently, the Jander Lab found that monarch butterflies can process most cardiac glycosides and make them beneficial. So then the butterfly is toxic to its prey and the prey is less eager to eat the monarch butterfly <laughs> caterpillar. Um, one exception is Vashorin. Monarch caterpillars cannot process Vashorin and it costs the costly detoxification in the monarch so it stunts growth and it can possibly kill the monarch caterpillar. Um, it affects the heart pump or the ATP pass in the caterpillar. So our main interest is to see how the shorn is structured and how the special sugar group is made. Um, recently, the Jander Lab found that cysteine could be incorporation into the special sugar group, and it's found in the rest of the shorn, and it's also incorporated into glutathione, which is another chemical. So our rationale is that if glutathione biosynthesis is inhibited by BSO, then Vashorin would require or would be enhanced with more cysteine, which is what we wanted for our results. So our methodology is we sprayed buds with MEJA, which is a promoter. It only promotes buds and the Shorin pathway, so that's why we only sprayed the buds and not the seedlings. Um, and we put it through a 24-hour incubation period, and then we sprayed it again the next day and put it through another 24-hour incubation period. And we used three tubes containing BSO for a control and three tubes not containing, or, and three tubes containing BSO. Um, and for our seedlings, we did the same thing, except we used petri dishes. So one petri dish contains BSO and another one doesn't, and then we had six seedlings, so three in one and three in the other one. Um, and we put that through a seven-day incubation period, so much longer. <laughs> um, and then we used the LC machine to get our targeted profiling that you can see here. So for our results, we found that normal glutathione, which is glutathione without labeled cysteine, is, is significantly reduced when BSO is incorporated, so that's what we were looking for. Um, the same is true for both isotope labeled glutathione in both seedlings and in buds, so that's all good. You can see it on um, these figures here, so figures one, two, three, and four. Unfortunately, we did not find any increase of labeled cysteine or cysteine in Vashorin. Um, we were really looking for quite the opposite in that. And you can see it here, both of our numbers were not significant enough, so that's really unfortunate. Um, some reasons for that could be the Vishorin experienced a turnover. So the cysteine that we added in went into Vishorin and then it came out. And when it went back in, it wasn't strong enough to connect back to the Vishorin, so it was just pushed away. Um, another reason could be a rate limiting enzyme, so it could have been too slow or too fast and the Jander Lab just didn't catch it in time. So farther steps would be increasing our abundance of cysteine into Vishorin to get those levels up. Um, and another one would be to monitor Vashorin's levels over a smaller incubation period, so less than 24 hours, maybe like five minutes, an hour, two hours, to really catch when cysteine goes into Vashorin or if it goes into Vashorin at all. And that was my project. Um, my favorite part was the lab work. I'm a really hands-on person, so any lab work that I had was definitely